Hello everybody, my name is Nixium, and for the first time, as you saw, Fireside with Nixium has a real fire going. You can probably hear it burning. So hopefully it creates some nice ambience as we talk. Like with every episode, I have five questions from the previous one, and then we'll talk a little bit about Nixium's background story. All right, we'll continue the tale of the Death Knight. So let's get started. Uh, the first question comes from Dominic Kahn. And he asks, what is the story between you and Danger Dolan? So, um, I believe originally when I met Danger Dolan, um, originally he featured both me and Mookluck on a video of YouTubers that he watches that do WoW content, right? And me and Mookluck were very thankful for that. And so if I remember correctly, we kind of reached out to the guy, said thanks, and I don't know, uh, it was such a long time ago that pretty much what ended up happening is uh, Danger Dolan started to kind of cameo in my videos, and Mookluck always wanted him to cameo in his, but I don't think he ever did at any point. But uh, Danger Dolan cameoed in my videos, like How To Girlfriend and stuff like that, and uh, a long time later, um, I went to BlizzCon, which was last year, I went to BlizzCon, and I actually met Danger Dolan in person, uh, not for very long, only for like a minute or two. He just came up, said, hey, I'm Danger Dolan. I was like, oh, Danger Dolan. You know, I love the guy, he's incredibly nice. And uh, later on, a couple months down the road, uh, kind of at the beginning of this year, well, not at the beginning, like halfway through this year, uh, Danger Dolan pretty much said to me through Skype, hey, Nixium, um, he was like, hey, Nixium, like, uh, I'm kind of looking for someone to do uh, some voice acting for me for Super Planet Dolan. And we wanted, uh, he wanted specifically a character that, or a voice that was very deep and kind of scary for more scary countdowns or countdowns that had to do with murder and stuff like that. And so uh, naturally I was like, oh, I, I mean, I'll do it because apparently he wasn't satisfied with his you know, his previous voice actors or something, the people who had who had auditioned, bleh. And so, um, I said that I would do it, and that's how I pretty much got on Super Planet Dolan, and I admit that I was very excited <laughs> to see Nixium as an animated character, and it was awesome. So that's, that's the story about how I met Danger Dolan and how I ended up where I am now. Uh, question number two comes from Baby Dragon. And Baby Dragon wanted to know, uh, how did I roleplay, and how can he get involved? Um, so, when I roleplayed, if you've been following this fireside for a while, you know that I roleplayed as Nixium. Uh, originally, he was a rogue character, and then he became a Death Knight, which is where we're at right now in the story. And I also roleplayed as his son, Morthen, aka Ashvin. And I role-played originally as a very kind of, you know, who cares kind of role-player, but I slowly became kind of an elitist over time. I, I pretty much got really hardcore into role-play for a while, and I got a little too hardcore into role-play to the point that I stopped because I was like, oh, this is like consuming my life. And um, how can you get involved in role-play? Honestly, dude, just make a character. Uh, I recommend, honestly, if you're gonna play, like, let's say, for example, like a mage, um, I recommend, don't like, don't just make a character and say like, oh, I'm a mage. Like, don't do that, because you don't know what it's like to roleplay as a mage, and uh, the fire's getting kind of low, so I'll put more wood on it in a second. But, um, you know, you don't know how to roleplay as a mage, you don't have, like, years of experience like someone else might, so I always recommend that you start by becoming the apprentice or a student of whatever class you want to roleplay as, and that way you can kind of learn the style and everything, and yeah, that's what I recommend. Um, so if you're going to roleplay a druid, become the Theroshan of a, you know, uh, someone that's been roleplaying a druid for a while. Let me put some more wood on this fire. Okay, that thing, <laughs> that thing ain't going out anytime soon. Anyway, so yeah, um, that's what I recommend if you want to get into roleplay. <laughs> Question number three comes from 
Mad John S R Tukiba, and he asks, "What is my favorite race? And can I tell you guys my main race? And do I play in a guild, or am I kind of more of a lone wolf kind of player?" Um, I first of all, my favorite race uh, is probably going to be Forsaken. It's always been Forsaken. Um, it's going to be Forsaken or Night Elves. You know, it's always kind of a debate between the two. This fire's hot, but I can't move back or I'll be out of, out of camera. <laughs> um, uh, Forsaken, Forsaken or Night Elves. And uh, the main race that I play is Forsaken right now. And I do play in a guild, the Weary Travelers, which is a more of a fan guild. It's on Argent Dawn EU. And I play on there, or play in that guild with my friends, like Voldy Khan and everybody. Uh, but right now, because of the fact that I'm very, very busy, uh, you know, working on videos, and I've started on a second channel, so I'm making videos for that channel and stuff. Um, because I'm so busy now, I'm more of a lone wolf type of player. Originally, I was actually going to raid lead uh, back in, uh, like, in the Weary Travelers, but um, I just don't have the time to do it. But that's okay. You know, the, the guild was able to continue on without me, but right now I'm playing more as a lone wolf. Uh, question number four comes from Ray Davis, and hopefully the crackling fire isn't too loud, but question number four comes from Ray Davis. Ray Davis wants to know, uh, did I play Warcraft 3 as a kid? The answer to that is no. I did not play Warcraft 3 as a kid. I didn't play Warcraft 3 until probably Burning Crusade in World of Warcraft's timeline. I mean, I played World of Warcraft, I love World of Warcraft, or I loved it, but I didn't know anything about the story. I was just like, oh, I'm a cool undead mage. Like, how cool is that, you know? I'm a mage, and I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about Lordaeron or Arthas or really anybody. I just knew there were dead people and demons, and I mean, I didn't know much of anything. And when I finally did play Warcraft 3 back in Burning Crusade, it was... It was definitely one of the best games I've ever played. I mean, I loved it. I mean, the way it just kind of added so much depth to the to the world that I was playing in. It was, it's a feeling I can't describe because I loved World of Warcraft so much. And now suddenly, like, I understood what was going on. Like, I understood, you know, the, the tragic story of Lordaeron and how it fell and Arthas. And I would stand in Tears Fall Glades and be like, dude, this is where it happened, man this is where it happened, and so, um, so, I mean, technically, I guess I was a kid back then, I mean, I was just a young teenager, um, so, I mean, and, yeah, I guess you could say I was a kid, uh, but if you mean, like, a little, little kid, uh, no, no, I didn't play it until later on, but, man, I would love, I would love to play through Warcraft 3 again, and I probably will play through Warcraft 3 again on my second channel, Nixium Plays, at some point, so, Stay tuned for that. All right, and the last question is from Mushroom TV, and Mushroom TV wanted to know, am I excited for the next Elder Scrolls game? Come on, man. Come on, man. What, what kind of question is that? Of course I'm excited for the next Elder Scrolls game. That's like asking me, hey, Nixium, uh, do you want to eat this chocolate? It's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> of course I want to eat that chocolate. Yeah, dude, I, I can't wait. Um, I don't know if the next Elder Scrolls game is going to be as good as Skyrim. N not in terms of mechanics and stuff, but mostly theme. Because Skyrim was so good in its theme with its whole, you know, Viking, Old Norse, you know, mountains and snow. I mean, it, for me personally, like, I love that theme when it comes to games. I love mountains. I love snow and frost and tundra. Like, I love that kind of theme in video games. And so... Uh, for me, the next Elder Scrolls game probably isn't going to do it thematically for me, but the gameplay and everything is obviously going to be improved, and there's going to be so many new features, and that's going to be so awesome to check out. I cannot wait for the next Elder Scrolls, and they need to hurry up and get it out. Yeah. Gosh, I really hope that... <laughs> I really hope that you guys can, like, see me decently, like, decently enough that I can actually use this footage, and so I don't have to, you know, redo this once I get inside, but... I guess we'll find out. Um, so we're moving on now to uh, Nixium's background story. Uh, if you're just now joining us, he just now became a Death Knight with three other members of the Remnant. Um, they are the Four Horsemen, you know. And uh, 
that's pretty much where we're at, and they all are serving the Scourge and the Lich King. Now, uh, pretty much during this uh, time period, uh, when this happens, if you go to Ice Cream Glacier right now, and you go to like the first part before the first gate, you will see that there's like all these like siege engines there and all these fallen heroes and dead people. It's almost like the Horde and the Alliance tried to attack or push into Ice Crown Glacier, but they failed. Um, all this takes place before that. And so what ends up happening is, you know, Nixium, you know, he gets turned into a Death Knight and stuff. And along with these three other people, Remius makes it back uh, to the Remnant. And um, pretty much, uh, freaking motorcycle. <laughs> and uh, pretty much what happens is um, the Horde and the Alliance eventually go to do this attack on Ice Crown Glacier. They're gonna push into the glacier, they're gonna try to break these gates. Uh, make their way, you know, defeat the Scourge, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, if you've played the game and you've been to that area, well, the attack doesn't work out so well. Um, and, of course, the Remnant, being this military organization, they are going to be a part of this, uh, just like many other guilds are going to be a part of it. And I need to put a little bit more wood on the fire, so one second. All right, that's about, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes worth of logs on there, so... Anyway, so the Remnant is going to push into Ice Crown Glacier, and at this point, nobody knows about what happened to Nixium and the other three individuals. Nobody knows that they've died. Nobody knows that they're Death Knights. Nobody knows. And in typical Lich King fashion, uh, when the Remnant does reach Ice Crown Glacier, they find Nixium and friends waiting for them in the battlefield. Now, the Battle of Ice Crown Glacier, the Remnant specifically, uh, took part in, if you go to kind of the north slightly of that area of Ice Crown Glacier, where like all the tanks and the destroyed siege engines are, there's kind of like that hilly, snowy area where there are no mobs or anything. That's where the battle took place between the Remnant and the Scourge. That was where their troops were. And uh, during this battle, in a funny and ironic thing, we have the Lich King, of course, pitting Nixium and friends against their former allies, and Tarotar, and Ulrich, and Remius are in shock at this, you know. Uh, Nixium and their friends have been turned against them. They're members of the Scourge, and they're fighting, and it's ridiculous, and <clears throat> it's a, a very long battle. It lasts for a long time. It was a huge roleplay fight, but in the end, uh, the three other horsemen are killed, and the Scourge line is, it's, it's breaking, it's, it's crumbling, there's not as many defenses over there, and we like to pretend that because of not just the Remnant, but the other guilds that were involved with us, uh, because of their victory on that front, that is what allowed the, you know, Argent Dawn, or the Argent Crusade to kind of sneak into that area and build the, you know, the Argent Tournament, you know, kind of cleared out that area. You get the idea, but that's just, you know, just pretending. But uh, anyway, uh, the area didn't have that much Scourge in it, so they're not fight. They're not facing the full force of the Scourge in, in the glacier itself, right? So um, the, the three of the horsemen die, or the three Death Knights die, and only Nixium is left. And in this battle between the Remnant, and I believe it was two other guilds that were on that front, um, and like the Scourge and stuff. In this battle, uh, Nixium uh, ends up 1v1-ing Tarotar, uh, the leader of the Remnant, the paladin who had, you know, vouched for him, had been his friend back when he was in the Eternal Arcanum, the man who taught Nixium about honor and all this stuff. And during the fight, uh, Nixium and Ulrich are just, you know, they're going at it. And what ends up happening is or, or, uh, Nixium and Ulrich, Nixium and Tarotar are going at it, and Ulrich, Tarotar's son, sees them fighting 1v1. He sees that his dad is getting cut off from the rest of the, you know, their army, the living army, and Ulrich is running to help his father, and unfortunately, Tarotar is an older man. He's not as young, well, young. 
he's not as agile and quick as Nixium is, and Nixium, the Death Knight, ends up delivering a fatal blow to Tarotar straight uh, across his chest. But in this moment, in this moment, when Nixium kills Tarotar, one of his best friends and, you know, one of his mentors and the man that took him in and loved him and tried to help him to the best of his ability, in this moment, as Tarotar is about to fall, he reaches out and he touches Nixium. He just touches him on the shoulder. Now, of course, there's the question of, you know, how did Nixium become like a sane Death Knight again? And it was this moment. It was Tarotar touching Nixium's shoulder, giving him this last blessing of the light as he was taking his final breaths to remind Nixium that this is, that, that Nixium is his friend. Tarotar is his friend, and the remnant are his allies. And to show Nixium through the light, through like the clouds that the Lich King has put in his mind controlled mind, to show him what he was doing. And it was Tarotar's sacrifice that broke the Lich King's control on Nixium's mind. But unfortunately, Ulrich saw Nixium kill Tarotar. And so uh, Nixium and Ulrich kind of engaged in a 1v1 for a little bit too, as Nixium's head was kind of clearing out. I'm gonna put a little bit more wood on the fire. One second. So yes, never forget the sacrifice of Tarotar, and never forget the fact that Ulrich, Tarotar's young son, was right there to see it happen. So Ulrich and Nixium immediately start to fight 1v1, and, and Nixium, like, he's kind of coming to his senses now. He's like, oh, you know, what? what's going on? What have I done? You know, like, he, he knows what he's done, but he's like, it, the full gravity, the full weight is now hitting him, and he's trying to tell Ulrich, you know, stop, stop, stop. You know, like, it's me, like, I'm back, you know, I, 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 like, stop, stop, stop. But Ulrich just won't stop. He's consumed by rage that, you know, Tarotar, his father, the paladin, is dead and has made this sacrifice. And in this fight, Ulrich tells Nixium that, you know, that he's always hated him, that he's always looked down on him, and that even though his father, Tarotar, always said that deep down Nixium is a good man, you know, a strong and secure and trustworthy ally, Ulrich never believed it, and right now, this was the proof, and what ultimately ends up happening is Nixium is able to get away from the fight, uh, Ulrich and him get separated in the conflict, and Nixium makes his way to the outskirts of the battlefield and retreats into the Storm Peaks, and Ulrich retreats back with the rest of the remnants, and they kind of mop up the remaining undead. The battle is over, that area was a victory, but of course, you know, the rest of the Alliance soldiers kind of got wrecked, and you can see the evidence of that in Ice Crown Glacier, that, that battle that took place. So we liked to pretend that our roleplay battle took place during that time, right? So pretty cool, right? Kind of fits into the major storyline, that was kind of our idea. But anyway, so... Nixium has now retreated out into the Storm Peaks, and he is... If he was at a loss of what to do previously, now he's completely at a loss. Because as he looks upon the past maybe two or three weeks, ever since he took his own life and was turned into a Death Knight by the Lich King, and what he did where he attacked Tarotar and the Remnant and killed Tarotar, and how he betrayed the very values that he swore to uphold because of his anger towards the remnant, because of Lie, and because of, you know, everything that had happened between him and the remnant and her and his child dying and everything. Nixium just kind of, he's a wreck. He's a wreck. And for the longest time, Nixium is just a wanderer. As this war against the Lich King is raging on, Nixium is just a wanderer, just wandering across Northrend, not communicating with anybody, seeing himself as a monster, not just because of the fact he was a Death Knight, but because of what he had done, because of the people that he had betrayed through his anger and through his selfishness. 
and he began to, of course, meditate again on his son and share Winnie, and <clears throat> Nixium has a moment while in the wilderness, and unlike Arthas, who went into the wilderness and became corrupted and he lost the last ounces of his soul, Nixium goes out into the wilderness, and while there, <clears throat> he has an epiphany, and he realizes everything that he's done wrong, and he realizes that he can make it right, but he's got to face the past. And so, conveniently during this time, the remnant was, uh, was actually engaged in a battle with the Scourge again. This time, it was in Howling Fjord, uh, in the mountains, like the snowy, the snowy area, and the Remnant was in a battle with the Scourge, like a kind of a very slow campaign of push and push and retreat and push, very back and forth campaign, and Nixium shows up and offers his help to the Remnant. Obviously, you know, even though Nixium says, I've, I've changed like, I realized what I did wrong. I'm not under the Lich King's control anymore. Ulrich wants no part of it. Wants nothing to do with Nixium. Remius, the only person that was willing to even listen to Nixium was Remius. Only Remius, Nixium's best friend. And even Remius was like, you know, uh, not entirely sure about this whole thing. But Nixium swears that he wants to help them and he is denied this. He begs to help them in the fight. He's denied it. Ulrich says, no, you are not coming back into the remnant. You have betrayed us. You have betrayed Tarotar. You, like, damn you, pretty much. And Ulrich says, you are lucky that I don't kill you. But the only thing that was holding Ulrich back was the fact that he was a paladin in training, like his father was, but his father was a paladin. So, Nixium heartbroken, walks away. But as this battle... Well, actually, no, 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 excuse me. Nixium walks away, but he realizes that the Scourge forces that the Remnant are about to fight against the next day, as he wanders off, he sees how vast they are. He sees that the Remnant has no chance. They have no chance to defeat this Scourge army they're about to face tomorrow. And so Nixium immediately begins to run back, run back to warn Ulrich and friends that you're walking into a trap. And so as the Scourge army is marching, Nixium is running back to warn them. I'm gonna put a little bit more wood on the fire and then uh, I'll continue, all right? Let's do it. Now there is one thing that I didn't mention. Um, during the fight, where Nixium killed Tarotar and fought Ulrich briefly, the Remnant won, the Remnant and the two guilds, but the Remnant sustained very, very, very heavy losses in that fight. The losses were so bad, in fact, that the Remnant went from this very powerful organization with many, many troops to just maybe like two dozen, just two dozen people. It was terrible. And now you have this Scourge army of hundreds about to descend on these people. The Scourge don't sleep, and neither does Nixium now, so he's running with the Scourge. And man, this fire's hot. Woo! <laughs> anyway, so Nixium is running, trying to outpace this army that's ahead of him. And by the time he reaches, by the time he reaches the outpost where the remnant is stationed, the Scourge is already attacking and the Remnant is desperately trying to hold on. They're just trying to hold on. And what ends up happening is during the fight, Nixium jumps in to help, and he ends up fighting side by side with Ulrich and Remius and a number of other people that scorned Nixium. And the battle, I remember, it was a very long battle. The Remnant held their line to the best of their ability. And Ulrich, in this very heroic moment, at one point, when it was pretty much almost certain that it was over, that there was nothing left, that 
this was the end of the remnant. Ulrich turned to Nixium, who had come back, not once, but twice to help them. And Ulrich said in the middle of the fight to Nixium, I never understood why my father defended your honor and why he said that you were a good man deep down, but now I think I understand. Now I think I understand. And it was in that battle that Ulrich died. It was in that battle that Remius sustained an injury so severe to his chest that he had to be rushed off the battlefield and he was incapacitated for months. It was in that battle that the remnant came to an end. The scourge won, the position was overrun, and the survivors, Nixium included, scattered to the wind. Some of them went to join other alliance guilds and groups. Some of them wandered off to do who knows what. Nixium wandered off and went back to Kalimdor. And that's where he went. And that was pretty much the final event of the Remnant before the guild officially died. That was the final event that we did and then the guild was over. Everyone went their separate ways, that was it. And Nixium went back to Kalimdor. And for some time, Nixium just... Nixium just chilled out in Kalimdor, again becoming a wanderer, thinking on the fact that Tarotar is dead, Ulrich is dead. He doesn't know what the condition of Remius is because he was hoisted off by the Remnant's medics. What does he do? What does Nixium do? Well, remember what I said. Nixium had an epiphany that he could make a change that he could turn his sins around and redeem himself for them. And so while in Ajara, by himself, Nixium makes a decision. And it's been about two months, maybe three months, since the end of the Remnant. And Nixium says, the Remnant's not dead. It's not dead, because I'm still here. And because despite what I've done, I still believe in the values of the Remnant. I still do. And Nixium, in a quest to maybe redeem himself in the eyes of himself, and to Elun, and to just mainly himself, Nixium decides, I'm going to recreate the Remnant. But it's not going to be the Remnant. It's going to be called the Remnant of Shadows. And I think that that is pretty much where I'm going to wrap it up. Nixium is now going to lead a military group. And this is when pretty much I went from being a follower role player to a leader role player. Now, the reason why I'm going to wrap it up here is because the fire is starting to run a little bit low. And um i've still got plenty of wood but i'd like to save it for another night for if a friend is over so i think i'll stop here hopefully the light is still good on me good enough it is getting kind of low but guys i'm gonna wrap it up there sacrifice of tarotar the death of ulrich the disappearance of remius there's so it's it was such a good time in my role play it was such a good time so many heroic moments it was it was great and this is all taking place during wrath of the lich king so my friends hopefully the audio was good hopefully the lighting was good i'll only know once i go back inside and look at it but my friends thank you for watching next month i will do five more questions as always and i will continue the story we'll talk about what did the remnant of shadows do how big did it get and how did it impact nixium's life and uh, we're kind of getting back to Morthen now. Morthen is going to step back into the story a little bit. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hope you enjoyed and peace.